be in much prayer for our two young men that's be up here with us today, Brother Josh and uh, Brother Alex. Be much prayer for them today. If you want to open up your bulletins and those that are online with us, uh, turn to your page in 592 in your songbook and. Uh, <coughs> so I, this morning I woke up and I was dreaming on for song 321. And every time that I tried to get 321 in the book, I couldn't find it. So, and uh, had some people helping me trying to find 321. Zeke was trying to help me. He said, I've got it. I've got it in my songbook and plates there. It wasn't there. Somebody else was trying to help me find 321 and cutting. Bina Sue had it in a notebook. You know, you, you, you pull the page out of a, a book. So she got it there. He wasn't 321. But so when we was trying to sing it, she was printing off something in the back with old time photos on it. So, <laughs> so I said, we're not going to sing 321 today. <laughs> Uh, I did not before. <laughs> All right, so. But today, 592 is what we're going to start off with. So, But open up your bulletins this morning. We're glad to, uh, to have those, our visitors, with us today. You're not visitors, you're family. And we're glad to have you here with us. And uh, pray that you get a blessing out of today's service. But in today's bulletin, I read this this morning. It says, devote yourselves to prayer. That's what we need to do. Every day we need to start the day off with prayer and asking God to lead, guide, and direct our lives in whatever situation that we face that day. And he is just and faithful that he will lead us and guide us in all our paths. He says then, being watchful and thankful in Colossians 4, 2. So we not only need to ask, and thank, ask God in prayer, but we need to thank God for the prayers that he answers for us in our life. We want to remember the lost this morning in our prayers, our youth. We want to remember them. We also want to remember our revival that's coming up <clears throat> uh, starting October the 16th. Be a much prayer for that. And we also want to remember the families of Dennis Johnson, Mary Cooley, Mike Murphy, Archie Williams, and Mark Moore. So we want to remember those families this morning as well. And also got a, re in a remembrance of our brother, just passed away here recently, uh, Charles Frederick, Charles Randolph Frederick. So we want to remember him, and I've got a little thing here to read about Brother Randolph. It says, Our most heartfelt sympathy is extended to the family of Brother Randolph. He passed away on Saturday, August the 26th, 2023, at St. Clair Regional Medical Center, Moorhead, Kentucky, at the age of 82 years, three months, in one day. He was born Sunday, May 25th, 1941, the son of the late Charles and Rhoda Easterling Frederick. <clears throat> Excuse me. Randolph was a not united in marriage to Doris Steele in November of 1963. They were blessed with three sons, Chuck, Chan, and Chris. He was a former vocational teacher and former owner and operator of Rifle Coal Company. He was an avid hunter fisherman and woodworker. He was a Christian and a member of the Lacey Creek Church of Christ, baptized into Christ July the 11th, 2021 by Brother Tom Steele and Billy Conley. He will be remembered as a loving husband, father, grandfather, brother, uncle, and friend. He will be sadly missed by all his family and friends and all who knew and loved him. In addition to his parents, Randolph was preceded in death by one son, Chris Frederick, one granddaughter, Madison Bailey Frederick, three brothers and two sister-in-laws, Grover Frederick, Juanita, Harold Frederick and Juanita, Titus Frederick, an infant sister, Frona, Maurice Frederick, mother-in-law and father-in-law, Estelle and Hazel Steele, and brother-in-law and sister-in-law, Bobby <coughs> Lee, Buster Cottle, Harry Steele, Carlene, and Helen Steele Frederick. Survivors include his loving wife, Doris Steele Frederick, two sons, Chuck Frederick, Teresa, and Chan Frederick, all of West Liberty, Kentucky, daughter-in-law, Michelle Frederick of Lexington, Kentucky, one sister, Gay Frederick Cottle of West Liberty, Kentucky, and several nieces and cousins. 
Randolph will be missed very much by his fam many families and friends. So let's remember Randolph and uh, his, also his family. So we had some birthdays in here. And also uh, praise report, Brother Bobby Scott is thankful for all the prayers and that we ask to continue to remember him in his prayer and prayers. So we still remember Brother Bobby. Our, as I said earlier, we want to remember our fall revival that's coming up October the 15th. Let's remember that. Our backpack program for the school, for the Dan's correspondence courses he has offered, and our uh, pantry, uh, Christ Pantry downtown for our crackers that we take up here for the church. So some good readings in the bulletin this morning. Take time to read that. There's a lot of information that goes in there. And uh, so uh, take time to read that. And we'll turn it over to Brother Jimmy. <clears throat> Our song maestro. A song is like anything else. It should be sung with happiness and force. And this was entitled Old Happy Day. Uh, I had the privilege to ride down to Bath County last night to revival or having down there, and I went down with Russell and Wanda. I enjoy meeting people that are just good old country people like we are, and uh, I really enjoyed that night. But I think I'm going to nominate Russell for to drive in Bristol next year. I'll <laughs> <laughs> hear from that. <laughs> now, Russell's my buddy. <clears throat> oh, happy day that fixed my choice. On thee, my Savior and my God, well may this glow we heart rejoice until it's rapture all abroad. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. Tis done, the great transactions done. I am the Lord, and He is mine. He drew me and I followed on, charmed to confess the Lord divine. Happy day. Happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day. Happy day, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. Now rest my long divided heart Fixed on this blissful center rest, nor ever from my Lord depart, with Him I very good possess. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch and pray, and live rejoicing every day. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. Probably we can if we think enough to uh, when that day happened and how happy we've been. Not turn the number, uh, what, 361? And we'll, uh, to sing this song and really get the feeling out of it, you got to really believe it. This world's not my home. I'm just passing through. That's all. My life will be like a vapor that appears for a little while, and then it disappears. <coughs> You're blessed this morning. If somebody's called you a peculiar person, say thank you, amen. You know why? Somebody peculiar people. Somebody repeat it. We're peculiar people. We are a peculiar people. 
We want to do good things and help our fellow man. Bless the Lord. All right. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. They're all expecting me, and that's one thing I know. My Savior pardoned me, and now I onward go. I know he'll take me through, though I am weak and poor, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door. I can't feel at home in this world anymore. I have a loving Savior up in glory land. I don't expect to stop until I with him stand. He's waiting now for me in heaven's open door. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my own, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Just up in glory land we'll live eternally. The saints on every hand are shouting victory. Their songs of sweetest praise drift back from heaven's shore. And I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Oh, Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then, Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. If you will turn to number 149. There's so much sickness, we just put it in God's hands, and uh, I had the privilege of leading prayer in that Bath County last time. And the one thing, and at my age, I'm just now coming around to it. God knows when we're sick. God knows our needs. But we're told to pray for one another. But the biggest thing we need is strength. Strength. If your body's strong, you'll overcome the sickness. If our spiritual body is strong, we'll overcome anything in the world. And so this morning, my personal prayer is for strength in the times that we live. <clears throat> Once from my poor sin sick soul, Christ did every burden now I walk redeemed and whole, hand in hand with Jesus. Hand in hand we walk each day, hand in hand along the way, walking the Fair 
this morning? What is Willow? What's wife's name? Willow? I can't remember. Whistling, yeah. Any other prayers? Requests? <laughs> One his brother, Alan. Okay. So Josh, remember, uh, Christ made a mind. Uh, his wife texted this morning that he had collapsed and uh, he's in Pikeville uh, Hospital. And they're running a test, and uh, uh, his name's Sonny Boyd, and he's the pastor at one of the churches there at Bowman, there above Betsy Lane. So I want to remember him. Sonny, Sonny Boyd. Sonny Boyd. Uh, Heather's got a co-worker. His wife goes in. To, uh, she has breast cancer. And she goes in for surgery tomorrow. And you have another co-worker that y'all just done a fundraiser for. She has the cancer.
and they're both young women. Yeah, she has four young, they have four young kids. <coughs> Keep them in your prayers this morning. Anyone else? Wanda Barker, hip surgery. Anyone else? Yeah, Josh, if you would remember, Bina Sue, she dropped some stuff on her foot. Okay. And I think she's decided this is a good time for a diet. She had a cup of cereal this morning. Now, you didn't run over her foot, did you? <laughs> no. Okay. But remember her, she would love to have been here, and I'd love to have her, but she's going to be all right. Doc Fred taking good care of her. Remember Bina Sue this morning. Hope she gets spoiled. No other prayer requests I'll read uh, from uh, Philippians chapter 4, 6, and 7. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplications with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which <coughs> surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. Dan, can you come up and lead prayer? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we're so thankful that we're able to be here today, Lord. Help us to keep you first and foremost in our mind throughout this service today, Lord. Help us to lift you up, to pray in your holy name, Lord, to, to give you all the glory. We are so thankful, for we know, Lord, that, that we're nothing without you. We have nothing. Everything belongs to you, Lord, but we, you let us use the things that, that we use, Lord, for the time that we're here. We pray, Lord, we pray, Lord, for those that we just had prayer requests for, Lord, as well as the ones in the bulletin and, and others that are sick and afflicted, for those that are in need of comfort today, Lord, because of the loss of the loved one. We pray for each and every one of them, Lord, that you would take care of them you know better than we do what their needs are, Lord, and we know that you can take care of them too, Lord. And if you need to use us to help, Lord, just, just point us in the right direction. We pray, Lord, for brothers Josh and Alex, or, yeah, bro, Josh and Alex here today, Lord, that, that you'd be with them, Lord, that, that uh, you would lead them and guide them, Lord, that the Holy Spirit might fill them up, Lord, that the things that they've studied for today might, might come to their remembrance, that they might be able to share your word with each and every one of us, Lord, that it does not come back to you void. Yes. We pray, Lord, for the leaders of, of your congregations, Lord, throughout the world, that they would look towards you for guidance <coughs> in the things that, that are being uh, taught. We pray that you would be with the leaders of our countries and cities and towns, Lord, that leaders of our schools and every place else, Lord, that all might look towards you for guidance before trying to teach and trying to lead somebody else. We love you very much, Lord, and we, we, we pray for so many things, Lord, and, and we're so thankful for all the many blessings, and especially, Lord, for your son, Jesus Christ, who came into this world and suffered and died, not because of anything he did, but because of our sins. We thank you very much, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'm going to turn to Luke, chapter 22, verse 13 through 20. So they went and found it just as he had said to them, and they prepared the Passover. When the hour had come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. Then he said to them, With fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took, it, took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among your, yourselves. For I say to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. 
And he took the bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you, but this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. It's time to turn to Psalm 311. And the elders, deacons, deacons and helpers around the table for offering. Not offering. <coughs> Wondrous love I see freely shown for you and me by the one who did atone. Just to show his matchless grace, Jesus suffered for the race in Gethsemane alone. Oh, what love, matchless love. Oh, what love for me was shown. His forever I will be for the love he gave to me. When he suffered all alone. Tarry here, he told the three. Tarry here and watch for me. But they heard no bitter moan. While my loving Savior wept in Gethsemane alone, oh, what love, matchless love. Oh, what love for me was shown. His forever I will be for the love he gave to me. When he suffered all alone, oh, in anguish deep was he, weeping there for you and me. For our sins to him alone, we should love him evermore for the anguish that he bore in Gethsemane. Heavenly Father, for this the fruit of the vine, which to us represents Jesus, who shed blood on the cross to forgive us of our sins. We pray, Father, that we take it in your name, so please hear your sight. In the Lord's name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
anyone was overlooked, please raise your hand and we might serve you also. Take up off offering I'd like to read from Second Corinthians nine five through eight. Therefore I thought it is necessary it necessary to extort the brethren to go to you ahead of time and prepare your generous gift beforehand, which you had previously promised that it may be ready as a matter of generosity and not as grudge as a grudging obligation. But this I say he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give us give as he pr proposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to make all grace a bount toward you, <coughs> that you always, having all sufferance, in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. At this time, we'll sing 68 as elders, deacons, and helpers watch the offering. <laughs> when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, angels, one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one, Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. When you look at others with their lands and gold, think that Christ has promised you is wealth untold. Count your many blessings, money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. <laughs>
I can read a couple verses here before I turn it over to Brother Alex out of uh, John <coughs> chapter 12 verse 23 through 26 but Jesus answered them saying the hour has come that the son of man should be glorified most assur assuredly I say to you unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies it remains alone but if it dies it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me and where I am. There my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, my father will honor. This time, Brother Al. Amen. Kind of fit right in. Uh, tried to take some notes. We serve an amazing God. Amen. So amazing. And every day that passes continues to shine throughout his people and the things that he does that they do. There's been things that's going on in my life right now that I know a lot of people are aware of. And I wanna, wanna thank everybody for your gratitude, your prayers, your love, your comfort, your generosity. It's appreciated. The accident I was in here a short while ago things could have been a lot different many little things that happened I'm standing here today during that same week same week in our own community other accidents people injured people died People in the hospital, people having surgeries. This message, I've, I've actually been working on it since I stepped out of the pulpit the last time. Um, and, and it just, everything, so many things going on in my life that, that, that point and, and confirm what I'm, what I'm speaking on today. We all suffer tribulation in one way or another. Um, and the devil, he, he's a deceiver. And he'll have us to believe what we're going through is worse than anyone else has going on. And that this thing, each of us, but the thing is, each of us are different people. We have different weaknesses. We have different things going on in our lives. And tribulation is tribulation. Satan will use whatever means able to get to each and every one that he can, knowing those weaknesses. Uh, I want to go to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning in verse 3. Blessed be God, even the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God, for as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for our consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope 
of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye also be of the consolation. As Christians today, the things that we endure, our tribulations, should be used to help somebody else. Even though we are different people, we're told that the things that we're going through are not common to man. That means somebody else is indeed going through exactly what we're going through. And when we, as an individual who've been through that and have Christ in our heart and can share the glory of the Lord and to shine him unto others, that, that's a light. That's, that's God's light under that individual uh, so that that individual may too be comforted so that that individual too may also receive salvation. 1 Corinthians 10, 31 tells us that for whatever we eat or whatever we drink or whatever we do, to always glorify the Lord. Uh, John chapter 11 We'll begin in verse 1. Now a certain man was sick, named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary which anointed the Lord with, anoint, uh, with anointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that he said, this sickness is not come unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Lazarus' sickness here was to glorify God. If we skip down on to uh, verse 14, then Jesus said, or Jesus, then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Jesus knew here that Lazarus was dead and he hadn't even went to him yet. But through that suffering, Christ was able to glorify God. Now there's Nobody walking around today raising people from the dead in order to glorify God. But again, those things in which we suffer should be used to do such. In verse 35 there, Jesus wept. Jesus Christ had sorrow. He groaned for the death. Of Lazarus just as we have sorrow and we and we groan and we uh, moan over the loss of our loved ones as well Jesus was going to ra raise Lazarus from the dead but it was still hurtful and it was still sorrowful um, in 30 starting in 39 there same chapter Jesus said, Take ye away the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, Said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid, and Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave cloths, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, 
loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. The suffering of Lazarus, even though I'm sure Lazarus surely did suffer and even died, but through his death, many believed upon Christ. Christ received the glory. <clears throat> uh, in all our sorrows and tears, Christ used those sufferings to praise God, to make believers of many. Also, sometimes as Christians, we tend to want to view someone else's life and compare ours to what we see in theirs and believe that maybe they are better off than we are. As Christians, and we, we may sometimes look at someone who's not a Christian and think that oh, they've got it made. Here, I'm over here suffering. This person's got it made. Why do I need to serve the Lord? But the thing is, we only see in their life what they allow us to see. They, too, have things going on. Um, Matthew 5, 45. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven, for he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. Jesus Christ, each and every soul on this earth will suffer in some capacity. No one person truly knows everything that someone else is going through because we have a tendency to allow the people to see what we want them to. But on the upside, each and every soul on this earth also receives blessings, whether we realize it or not. Yes, we do. James 1.17 Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. With him is no variableness, neither shadow or turning. Anything good comes from God. doesn't matter who receives it. If it's, if it's good, it's a blessing from God. We over, tend to maybe overlook our blessings sometimes. We woke up this morning. Do we see that as a blessing? It was. We put our feet on the ground. Is it a blessing? It was. Each and every breath that we take yes, sir. is a blessing. The food that we put on our plates is a blessing. The clothes on our backs, the roof over our heads, the surrounding of loved ones. So many things, so many reasons to realize our blessings, yet in this world today, we tend to maybe overlook those blessings and not realize how blessed we are to go on another day. Matthew uh, 6 and 25 was looking at two backwards <clears throat> Matthew 6 and 25 therefore I say unto you take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink nor yet for your body what ye shall put on is not the life more than meat and body than raiment behold the fowls of the air for they sow not neither do they reap nor gather into barns yet your heavenly father feedeth them and ye not much, are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. 
Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Sometimes we worry about many things. God tells us here that, that we're more important than the fowl of the air, <coughs> and, the, and we're more important than the lilies of the field, and yet they have food and raiment. Those are so blessed blessings of the, of the Lord. The difference, I believe, between one who sees uh, their life as blessed versus one who sees nothing but suffering is a matter of perspective. How we choose to see our lives. Take a half a glass. Some would say that it's half empty, half glass of water. Some would say it's half empty, and some would say that it's half full. The stars in the sky. We rare, rarely ever take notice because we see them almost every night. But when a meteor shower or some other rare occurrence happens in the sky, we stop and we take a seat. We plan the day to see this beautiful sight not realizing how beautiful a sight just the stars are and how amazing it is that they hang on nothing. Or even the blessing we have in this country to be able to come together and to worship the Lord. Amen. The way we do, do not, not taking into consideration that some countries, there are people who put their lives on the line just to read one verse. Thing, blessings come through tribulation. And without tribulation, they become common. And we, and we overlook them. And another instance that, that came to me this morning we, we talked about in in uh, Sunday school this morning the ability to be able to read and yet we don't use it the ability to be able to understand and yet we don't use it as a country uh, James 1 and 12 Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. The crown of life is promised to each and every one of us if we'll just love him. And, and by loving him, we have to obey his commandments. Acts 14 and 21 and when they had preached the gospel to the city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. We're going to have much tribulation if we expect to enter into that kingdom. In John 16 and 33, these things I have spoken unto you that in, in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. No matter what we go through in this life if we have Christ we should have joy not in what we're suffering but joy for Christ and we should be able to show that joy uh, Philippians 1 21 Paul says here 
For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Even the leaving of this world can be a blessing. If you're a Christian, you're living your life for the Lord. When we leave this life, we'll be with God. And how great. Pain's gone. Suffering's gone. No more tears, no more weeping. <clears throat> Sometimes in this world, I think that we as people sometimes have heaven and earth confused. Because God tells us the truth. He tells us here on this earth we're going to suffer. And he tells us in heaven that things are going to be great. Revelations 21 and 4. And God shall wipe away all tears in their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. Sometimes in this, in this, in this world, <coughs> people come to Christ. And when things begin to get a little hard, they start to have a little tribulation, a little suffering, a little sorrow. God done this to me. I don't want him anymore. They heard, but they didn't hear. Because God told them. If they truly heard, God told them, you're going to suffer. You're going to lose loved ones. You're going to have pain. That's what this life is. That's what we endure in this life. And let's not forget that greatest blessing given to all who will receive it. John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into this world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. A lot of people aren't going to receive the receiving because they won't hear the truth. And on that judgment day, they're going to be told, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. In James 4.14, 4, he tells us that our life is but a vapor. We're here for a little while, and then it vanishes away. No promise of tomorrow. 2 Corinthians 6 and 2 tells us now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Again, tomorrow may not come. If we're Christians today, we need to realize our blessings and we need to sh shout joy for the Lord. Shine it in everything that we do. If we're not Christians today, then you need to hear the word. You need to hear that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he came and he died on that cross for each and every one of us that we may live eternally with him. You need to believe that. You need to believe it with such strength that you make a decision. You repent. You change your life. You decide to live for the Lord. And then you need to confess. Confess what you've believed. Confess that you know that Jesus Christ came down to the earth as the Son of God, lived amongst this earth, and died upon that cross for our sins. 
and then you need to be baptized for the remission of your sins, washing away our sins in baptism. Baptism is overlooked by a lot of people, and it's the representation of Jesus' death. As we, it's our death, it's our burial, it's our resurrection. Amen. Here on this earth, Amen. into a new life. Mm -hmm. That's the representation of it. I wonder. I wonder what would happen. Well, I know what would happen, but if if Jesus had said, "Well, you know what? Dying on that cross, yeah, that seems all right. It seems like it'll work. It's a good thing. Nah, I don't have to do that because that's the way a lot of people." In today's society, treat baptism. And it is the representation of Christ's death and resurrection and burial. <clears throat> and once we've done those things, we become, you become a Christian, and then we've got to live faithfully, endure to the end, this time we're going to sing number 590. <laughs> when upon life's pillars you are tempest tossed. I've got uh, very, very crushed. Uh, I've Oh, and also, if, you, if you're not a Christian today, and, and, and okay. this is the time when you could, could come forward and you could, uh, you, could, you could believe where you're at, you've heard, you can believe, and, and you can come forward and you could confess Christ and you could be baptized for the remission of those sins. Buried with Christ, my blessed Redeemer, dead to the old life of folly and sin. Satan may call, the world may entreat me. There is no voice that answers within. Dead to the world, to voices that call me. Living a new, obedient but free. Dead to the joys that once did enthrall me. Yet is not I, Christ, liveth in me. Think it not strange that things I once cherished cannot allure me or charm as before. For in the flesh with Christ I have suffered, all things are past, I love Him no more. Redeemer, which 
which he so richly shareth with me. Into the world do voices that call me, living a new obedient but free. There do the joys that once did enthrall me, yet tis not I. Choice of songs. Anybody have anything before we dismiss? Thank you. It's good uh, to see everybody here. Alex talked on something. As, as you get older, a lot of things are going to happen to you. And you can take one or two attitudes. You can fight back or you can lay down and quit and feel sorry for yourself. It's one of the most horrible things you've ever done. So you need to keep fighting the faith, fight the battle. Let's go home together to be with the Lord. Anybody else? That's seven. Hmm? That's seven. Got services tonight at seven, uh, and again Wednesday night also at seven up here at the church house uh, online. Uh, there, the phone line that we have, and that number is on the front of the bulletin. Anyone else? Tom, could you lead us in a word of prayer? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this another Lord's Day. Thankful for the word that's been spoken today and that we may apply it to our lives, dear Heavenly Father, and gain faith, dear Heavenly Father, in thee, knowing, dear Lord, that we will suffer, but knowing that you have power and dominion over everything. Thank you for each and every one that's here, and we pray for those to Dear Lord, that are in need, praying, dear Heavenly Father, to be Thy will, we be back here again. All these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. 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 We now offer a free correspondence course. If you would like to participate, please write to Lacey Creek Church of Christ. Attention to Dan Hittipole, nine nine three Lacey Creek Road, West Liberty, Kentucky, four one. 472, or you can email us at Church of Christ at Lacey Creek at gmail.com. Be sure to include your name and your address.